Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your 8x20 outdoor storage shed. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your shed is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for timestamp associated with each step. Your shed comes on a pallet in three separate boxes, so let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we begin the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a 7 16 wrench, a 3 8 wrench, an adjustable wrench, a rubber mallet, a box cutter, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a hammer, safety glasses, a ladder, and a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. To make this easier, we're going to use vice grips, a Phillips bit, a socket adapter, a 7 16 socket, a 3 8 socket, and a 5 16 socket. All lifetime sheds require a foundation to be built on. We recommend building one out of concrete, but you can also build one out of lumber. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. It's also crucial that you refer to the instruction manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. This section will go over the requirements for the foundation of your shed. This video will focus on the assembly of the shed and not the foundation. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. But for now, we're going to move on to the next section. Align the holes at the end of the gutter channel with the holes in the connector and then secure with the hardware. Align the holes in the middle of the gutter channel with the holes at the end of the large truss brace, making sure to add the hardware with the head of the bolt on the inside of the gutter channel. To make tightening this hardware easier, I like to use a small Phillips bit inside some vice grips. Make sure not to over tighten this hardware. Insert a truss rod through the connector, adding a short truss brace and then going through the large truss brace. Only tighten the hardware so that this rod doesn't wiggle. Repeat this section six more times for a total of seven truss assemblies.
Align the two gable halves labeled AGH and AGI together in the middle and then secure with the hardware. Align the holes on the screen with the holes on the vent. Then align the holes on the vent with the holes on the front of the gable. Secure the vent to the gable with the hardware. There are two square tubes. The one you'll need for this step will be the tube that doesn't have these two small holes in the middle. Insert the end caps into each end of the square tube. Align the holes in the square tube with the holes in the back of the gable, making sure that the dimpled hole is facing down and that the square dimpled hole is facing towards you. Secure the tube to the gable with the hardware. Take the two gable halves with the curve at the bottom and align them in the middle and secure with the hardware. Attach the screen and vent using the same method as before. Take the other square tube, the one with the two holes in the middle, and then insert the cap into each end. Align the holes in the square tube with the holes in the gable, making sure that the dimpled side is facing down and that the square dimple is facing towards you. Start by securing the square tube to the gable through the center two holes. Finish securing the square tube to the gable through the remaining holes. Take the left door, which is the door with a lifetime logo, and insert the hinge tube into the round hole on the end of the door. Make sure to leave a couple inches hanging out on each side. Take the door and channel and make sure that these two holes line up with this notch on the door. Slide your door and channel onto the door, making sure to add your deadbolts into this cutout oriented like this. Align the holes in the strike plate with the holes on the door and channel. 
Attach the door latch over the strike plate oriented like this. It's normal if the hardware that you receive looks a little bit different than the hardware you see us using. Add the handle to the door with the hardware. Take the right door and insert the hinge tube into the round hole. Be sure to leave a couple inches hanging out from the top and bottom. Take your door and channel and align the two holes with the notch on the door and then slide the channel onto the door. Insert the thumb latch into the handle, making sure that these tabs go into the hole on the handle. Insert the handle into the door and secure with the hardware. Attach the door latch with the hardware, making sure it's oriented like this. Attach the bracket to the thumb latch, making sure it's oriented like this and secure with the hardware. Attach the spring to the latch and the bracket. While one person stands on a floor panel, have the other person lift up the floor panel at a 45 degree angle, interlock the tabs, and then lay it back down. Your door can go on either short edge, so decide which end you want your door to go on and then insert the bushings into these holes. Secure the floor panel together on the edges into these divots.
Take your 15 watt panels labeled AHD and add a wall support to the channel just to the left of the cutout at the top and with your wall support make sure that the two holes that are close together are at the top. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGY and add a wall support to the far right edge making sure that the two holes that are close together on the wall support are at the top. Take the corner wall panel labeled AGN and insert a wall support into the far left making sure that the two holes that are close together are at the bottom. Take your short wall support and insert it into the center channel on the window panel. The hardware on this needs to be inserted at an angle. Take the front corner wall panel labeled AGY and insert the tabs at the bottom into the cutouts just to the right of the bushing. Slide the wall panel towards the bushing to lock it into place. I'm comfortable kicking it with my foot, but if you're not, you can use a block and a rubber mallet to tap it over. Fold the panel over, lean it away from the floor, line up the tabs at the bottom with the cutouts on the floor. Then apply downward pressure to lock it into place. If you're having a hard time getting the tabs to lock into place, you can put a block under each tab to help. Take a wall panel labeled AHD and align the tabs at the bottom with the cutouts on the floor and then slide the panel to the left to lock it into place. Before securing this panel to the corner panel, make sure that this line at the top is even. Repeat this step for the next six wall panels. Keep in mind that the window panel can go on either long edge, just not the back wall. I like to put the window panel towards the back to allow more light to come into the shed. For this corner, you're going to use wall panel AGW and you're going to add it using the same method as the first corner wall panel. Mm -hmm. 
Next, add two wall panels labeled AHD to the back edge. For this corner, you'll need corner panel AGL and you'll add it using the same method as before. Complete this long edge using the remaining panels labeled AHD. For the final corner panel labeled AGN, insert it using the same method as before. On the back wall, there are three different height settings to put your shelf. Decide how high you want your shelf to go, and then add the shelf brackets to each wall support. Take the shelf and fold the flaps on the end up. Place the shelf on the brackets, making sure that the edge with the notches is against the wall. Secure the shelf to the corner wall panels and the brackets. Insert the hinge tube at the bottom of the left door into the bushing. Make sure that the hole at the bottom of the hinge tube lines up with the slit on the bushing. Then insert your cotter pin and separate the pins to lock into place. Make sure you insert the cotter pin from the outside going in. Repeat the same process for the other door. Close the doors and then add the gable with the curve at the bottom over the hinge tubes. Line up the holes in the gable with the holes in the corner wall panel and secure with the hardware.
Place the gap flap over the hinge tube oriented like this. Insert the truss assembly into the cutouts at the top of the wall panels at the front of the shed. With the help of another person, slide a roof panel over the gable and into the gutter channel. You'll know the roof is in the right place when the alignment nub is inside this notch on the gutter channel. Secure the roof panel to the wall panel through these four holes. Next, secure the roof panel to the gable and the truss assembly through the lower two holes. Take a roof support and insert it into the notch on the gable and the truss assembly. Finish securing the roof panel to the gable and the truss assembly. Repeat the previous steps for the roof panel on the opposite side. Repeat the previous steps for the next 6 trusses and 12 roof panels.
add the other gable to the back wall and secure the hardware. Add the final two roof panels using the same method as the first two roof panels. Take the roof cap labeled AGG and place it on the front of the shed. Place the next seven roof caps on and secure them with the hardware. Keep in mind they will overlap each other. The last roof cap will be labeled AFW. Fold the skylight in half, push it through the hole, open it back up, align the tabs with the holes, and secure with the hardware. Repeat the previous step for the remaining seven skylights.
Now you're going to add four gussets to each truss, one on the front and one on the back on each side of the truss. These screws are designed to go through the metal in the truss, so make sure that your drill is fully charged and on the highest torque setting. On each truss, lift up the short truss brace until it is flush with the truss and secure with the hardware. Take your window panel and remove the plastic film from both sides. With the lip at the top and facing out, insert it into the frame and slide it down. Insert the small screw into the hole at the bottom. Attach the window latches to the top of the window, making sure to leave the hardware loose so it can slide freely. Add your wall hooks anywhere throughout the shed where these notches are. If your doors aren't level, follow this link here to see how to properly level your doors. We've already done that, so we're going to move on to the next section. This section will go over how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation. Since we're inside, we're not going to be able to do that, but it's crucial that you do. So refer to your instruction manual to see how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation. 
Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime 8x20 outdoor storage shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.